Hey everybody, it's your boy Gary J. White, the founder of Wake Up Warrior, and welcome to the Date Your Wife podcast. I'm here sitting outside in the weather of coldness. It's not actually that warm right now, it's July, and uh, we had a baby. We had a baby, ladies and gentlemen. We've gone off live here with the show. If you notice, there's been some repeats here quite a bit the last couple months because uh, my wife... My wife had a baby she had to push out of her. I'm sitting looking at this beautiful child right now. I was born six, six, six feet, <laughs> six pounds, six ounces. She was 19 inches long and they actually took her three weeks early, three weeks early. She was born on July 3rd, the day before the 4th of July. And then we were home on the 4th of July with her. And I've got my wife here, my co-hostess with the mostess here who is recovering from said labor. She even got herself a spray tan today, and her fingernails did while I watched daughter and changed some poopy diapers. And uh, you can't really talk on his uh, recording if you got your finger sitting in the, the mouth of the baby. But I'm going to hold the phone over to you, and uh, let's come to you here for a little. First off, give me, uh, give, what's this, uh, describe in one word. Interview. It is. Describe in one word. Actually, no. Use the, a, an animal to describe how you feel about this baby. Like, if you were to describe your feelings as an animal, what animal would you be? No, I'm not going to describe it as an animal. But Let's try one more time. What animal would you be? I'm not going to be an animal. You don't have to be an animal. Your emotions would be an animal. If you had a feeling that was an animal with the, the energy you're having around this baby, what would, they, what would the animal be? This is a stupid thing. I'm not an animal. <laughs> I got nothing. You got nothing. All right, you well. Say a walrus? I don't sure, I don't know. Honeybee, Honeybee walrus, koala bear. koala bear. Three very interesting <laughs> animals. Okay, so um we are uh, we're here on the topic of new babies. New baby is time. One, is this one just like our update of what's going on? So, I'll give you guys a quick update and then I don't know if we want that to be the whole topic of the show, but yes, I um if you listen to some of our other pot Oh, where are you going? Some of our other podcasts, we were kind of giving like some baby updates. And my pregnancy was pretty easy till like towards the end. And they found a DVT in my leg, which is a blood clot. And then I started to get um, preeclampsia and high blood pressure. And they were like, okay, like you're the baby looks good, but we're worried about mom now. So like I literally went in for a doctor's appointment and he's like, congratulations, you're headed to the hospital for a baby. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, I was ready. I actually, before I knew anything was going on or wrong, I always had this intuitive feeling that she would probably come a little bit earlier. And it was funny because I had a baby shower like the Saturday. Let's see. I went into the hospital on a Tuesday and the Saturday before I had a baby shower. And I remember thinking like when my friend was planning it, I was, before I knew anything was wrong, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I had planned it then. She's like, you think you're going to have the baby that early? I'm like, I don't know. But something kind of was telling me maybe. But anyways, despite everything that happened. No. Um, no. Chloe's barking. Despite everything. <laughs> nope. Hold on. I'm like taking a break to put my dog in the house for barking. You don't get to bark. Nope. We interrupt this podcast to put our dog in the house to stop barking. In the house. All right, so let's continue without the barking dog. Ah, back on the couch. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so You're giving the update about the uh, baby shower, was like oh, yeah, you might so have been no, too early. So yeah, so no, I went to the hospital. Um, they ended up inducing me, but because I'm on blood thinners, like it kind of all comes down to timing and um, all this good stuff. So long story short, I, I've never had a baby natural, and... I was considering going, trying to go natural with this one, but when they induce you, obviously they have to give you what's called Pitocin that induces labor. And I've heard like, not I've heard, now I've experienced contractions are like way more intense when you're on Pitocin. So, but I hate epidurals because with my first two babies, I think I just had bad epidurals, honestly. Like they went clear up to my chest. They made me feel like panicky. They made me have like a panic attack. They were like, the baby's heart rate's going up. Like, so I just had a really bad experience with epidurals. And I was like, okay, well, screw it. I'm just going to see if I can go as long as I can. Um, even being induced and oh my God, <laughs> I, um, my anesthesiologist just came in and she's like, so I'm going in for a C-section. So do you want an epidural right now? And I was like, nah, it's manageable within like an hour and a half. I was dying. I was like, oh my God, when is she coming in? And crazy enough, like they gave me an epidural. Let's see. They gave me an epidural probably around like one 
45 and I had her by 3.30. So had I known it was going to go that quickly, I maybe would have held off, but I had no idea. I mean, you just don't know. So anyways, despite being induced and kind of feeling like it was a scary situation, she came out totally healthy, great, and the cutest thing ever. They put her on my chest and she has like two inches of like toe head, white blonde hair. And it's funny because I named a hairline out of, um, I actually named her first and then I had to come up with the name of my hand tied hairline within like 48 hours. And I was like, you know what? I think Isla sounds like a cool name. Let's do that. So <laughs> everyone's like, oh, you named your, your, um, you named her after your hairline, but it was actually the other way around. So anyways, it was just kind of ironic that she came out with like this super amazing hair. <laughs> like you don't see a blonde baby with this much hair. Like it's not like sparse. It's like super thick platinum blonde it's so cute and she's like so teeny and has this full head of hair so anyways things are going good I'm feeling pretty good I've slowly been out and about um I did go get a spray tan today because I was like maybe it'll look like the postpartum body look thinner what do you think it looks great and I like your band-aid that you had on your arm the, from the from the scab that you wouldn't stop itching over the past six weeks and would bleed like you had been cut with a ninja sword uh, because of her blood thinners, which she's still on right now. We're still dealing with the blood thinner side of things. Oh. But I'm going to come back to pregnancy because there's some things I'm going to talk about that went down. Number one, I want to celebrate the fact that I did not pass out. <laughs> That's right. For all those uh, assholes out there that were hoping I would pass out again, after, just like I did uh, relationship number two here with baby number two, with Ruby. No, 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 my friends. No passing out head here. Not only was there not passing out. I'm going to be honest. I stood there holding her left leg during the actual delivery like a champion. It was like I was a professional leg holder. It's like I actually went to college to learn the skill of leg holding. I mean, I held it like a champion. The the funny part is, though, is that Daniel doesn't even realize or remember that I was holding the left leg. That's how good I am at what I do. I didn't even, she didn't even know I was in the room. Yet there I was holding the left leg as the most intense Fierce pushing I have ever seen from my wife. Because here's the deal. She had the epidural, last two babies. And all I remember from the pregnancy is my wife, like first, we, there was no scheduling of this. She was over by like three or four days on both children. It was like middle of the night for like five straight nights in a row. Oh my God, I'm having this baby. We got to go to the hospital. Oh my God, I have this baby. We go to the hospital. I'm like, I'm panicky. And I'm like, I don't know if we're going to go. I don't know if we, we didn't go, but no, I'm like, I never said I don't that. Like I went into labor and I'm like, I think it's time. And we went in. And all right. My wife, anyways, let me tell the story. You're, right. you're messing up my great oh, story. Off. We're not off. Anyways. So. That both of those surgeries are both of those uh, those babies though. She had the epidural, and all I remember was her. She does. D- Danielle is horrible with medication. Like she's one person in the world you can be like, oh my god, I'm so tired. Oh my god, I'm so tired. Drink some diet coke. All of a sudden she's like, oh my god, I'm so lit up. I'm like, you had a shot of diet coke. What's wrong with you? She's like, oh, I've got such a headache. Or she's like, I just came out of like you know breast augmentation surgery. Or I came out of like you know I had to, my left leg cut off and reattached. And they're like, here's some Percocet. She's like, no, I'll just. I'll take some butter. Can you just put some butter on toast and that'll be good? Like, she literally doesn't respond. Like, she responds so positively to medication that an Advil or Tylenol works like three Oxycontin for me. So, she doesn't take the medication this time, though, which is super weird for me. Because, number one, we're scheduled going into this, which is totally new. It's, like, super weird. We go to the doctor. We go to the doctor. Because they're like, go ahead and go. Which that was kind of, I was actually so nervous having it scheduled. Like, I had the worst anxiety. And so when we showed up for that doctor's appointment, I had a feeling they were going to send me in early. But I didn't know it was going to be that day. And he was like, all right, well, go home and grab your bag and go to the hospital. I was like, what? But it was almost kind of nicer because it's like it, like the night before surgery when you're like super nervous. That's kind of how I was feeling. But like t- times 10 because I had really bad anxiety towards the end of my pregnancy. So it was kind of nice that we went in. And he's like, go ahead and go in. I was like, oh, thank God. For those that don't know how we actually ended up, because we didn't do a show on it, Danielle had Danielle had a series of doctors. She had a hematologist, she had a cardiologist, she had a high risk do- um, OBGYN, and she had a regular OBGYN, and then uh, anyone else in the mix? No. That was it. And then just an amazingly hot husband. So like these, uh, these are the five, four factors, and then me, right? So we go to the high risk doctor. And he's been watching her heart rate and her heart rate or her blood pressure and her blood pressure and the baby and making sure everything's okay. And he comes out and he's super nice guy, super small guy, walks out and he sits down and he goes, okay, so um, your blood pressure's still high. Um, you do have preeclampsia. And um, I think it's best that you go to the hospital now. 
And I look over at my daughter and I look over at my wife and they both have the same look. It's like the shocked white face look where they're both like, <gasps> this is happening now. And I'm saying they're like, like right now. And he's like, yeah, like right now. And I was like, like now? He's like, yeah, like right now. And Daniel's like, can I get my nails done? <laughs> We're like, no, no, not right now. You can't get your nails done. Although we did find out you could get your blowout and nails done. We were there waiting at the hospital. You should have gone and done that. To monitor me, they so I went in, and I had taken my blood thinner that morning. And with if my doctor kept saying, "Listen, like if you want to do an epidural, no anesthesiologist will touch you until like 24 hours until that um, blood thinner is out of your system." So I had taken my um, uh, Lovenox my blood thinner in the morning, and then he's like. I'm like, so you want me to go in? I'm like, I took my, my blood thinner this morning. He's like, it doesn't matter. He wanted them to monitor me because my blood pressure was so high and just monitor the baby the whole time. So, which I, I could understand. And then my doctor came in that night and he's like, so we can induce you right now, but like, you'll be fine till the morning. He's like, you don't want to have this baby in the middle of the night. I don't want to deliver a baby in the middle of the night. And I was like, I like your thought process. <laughs> so I, and then he sold me on like an egg burrito. So I, I decided just to wait till the morning. And uh, then I followed through on the one instruction that came through, which was the breakfast burritos, which I did, which, which the backfired. bacon oh. backfired for Danielle through the entire Literally. Pitocin contractions. Oh I'll let her tell you about the bacon. You but I'm not going to lie. If you ever have a baby at the Mission Hospital in Orange County, the it. breakfast Don't burrito that the doctors rave about is, in fact, as good, if not better, than any doctor's recommendation for said burrito at that has hospital. at the hospital, which you think like, why the hell would I go to a hospital for a great egg breakfast burrito? You but you would. In I'm thinking, I'm thinking that? about just going there tomorrow just to get a Maybe breakfast you burrito. Do uh, you probably can. You go there like, hey, why are you here? I'm like, I'm here for a breakfast burrito. Do you have anyone my you're visiting in the hospital? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my wife had a bit. My wife had a baby here. Uh, we had a baby here two weeks ago, but I love the burrito. Can I go? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna actually do that and video it and see what happens. I can make you that. Burrito. I bet you're secure. No, you cannot. Yes, you no, you cannot. You cannot make. No, you cannot make me that burrito. It was. <laughs> it's not the same. You don't understand. You. you it's a part of the okay. experience. You know of actually getting the burrito is going to the basement floor at the Mission Hospital. As soon as they gave me the Pitocin and the tra contraction started kicking in, I literally was like, oh, dear Lord, here comes the bacon. So the whole time, like, it was great when I was eating it. And it was, I only ate half. But the whole time I'm in labor, I'm like, dear Lord, why did I eat that egg burrito? I was really hating it. And the whole time you're asking, I'm saying, dear Lord, why didn't I get two of those burritos? <laughs> so we're sitting there and... uh this birth is happening, but this was a new experience for me because I had never actually seen, um, like, I don't hardly remember the birth of my son, right, from my first marriage with my ex-wife, Christy. She's an amazing woman. I love my son. I don't really remember it. Like, I was, like, 22. I was just freaking out. I had, I remember I had to wear, like, surgical gown. He was five weeks early. He was born five pounds, like, three ounces. He went home under five. section, though, right? No, it wasn't C-section. It was regular labor. And he went, she went early. And then he was born, like, he went, we took him home, like, four pounds, ten ounces or something. Like, under five pounds was crazy. So, I, but I don't really remember it, right? And then Bailey, I don't really remember Bailey either. Like, I don't really remember her pregnancy or the labor part of it either. I, for some reason, I don't. Ruby's I remember because I passed out, hit my head on the fucking metal thing, and then woke up, and I'm laying in a bed next to my wife. And I'm like, really? You just passed out in the middle of the night, you pussy. What's wrong with you? So I don't really remember that one so much except for I passed out. But this one was incredible. What I do remember is Danielle, like, dry heave. She can't vomit, which is the weirdest one. thing in the world. Like, she's the only human being on the planet I know who gets constipated with her vomit. Like, she doesn't vomit. That's she'll, like, literally... So bad for me. She'll literally hold on to, like, the throw up and somehow she'll poop it out. Like, I don't understand how she does this, but she abs. does... I think it's core strength. I'm going to give my... I, I'm serious. Like, I can't throw up. It's like... And people are like, well, did you have a traumatic experience when you were little? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I try to gag myself. Like... I, this doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes I drink too much and I'm hungover and I'm like trying to make myself throw up and nothing comes out. I am the worst sick person ever. Now, what she has is a superpower, right? So everybody has a superpower. Sometimes it takes a lot of years to figure out what your superpower is. Would you like to know what my wife's superpower is? She can turn vomit. Shits. Into diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she does it. She's like, she's like, I refuse to throw up, but I will diarrhea right now. I will like, I will, I will shit like a, the champion that I am. Like, you know what though? It's a fact. You need to own your talent. You don't throw up, but you push it out. I, no, listen, it's not even in the same place. How the fact that you can take it, you can reverse engineer that shit instead of it coming out your throat. 
it comes out Let's your butt. All right, we're going to shift this. So anyways, we're Danielle, da we're sh not shitting this. We're <laughs> shifting this. So I'm sitting there during this pregnancy, though, and it's, it's very different for me because I'm watching my wife naturally go through contractions. I mean, obviously not after they were Pitocin and they were like inducing her, but I, like, I've never I seen her tell, without pain. Guys, I like I'd never seen her without an epidural. I had never seen her not vomity because she's always like, Ugh! literally sounds like this. I mean, it's horrible. This is why I passed out. I don't know if I passed out from the needle or if I passed out from having to hear so many. So, like, this is going on, but, like, this is this labor, this labor was, you know exactly what I'm talking I about, do. though. I don't know but this I labor know. is the only time I didn't hear, even one time I didn't hear this. Because you the, epi ah! the epidural only worked up to mid-thigh. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> so they gave me the, <laughs> she gave me the epidural, and then they turned off the Pitocin, and she's like, how are your contractions? I was like... Oh my God, they're so much better. And she's like, yeah, I turned off the um, Pitocin so you could, your body could like relax a little bit. And I'm like, okay. So I felt great. I was like, man, this epidural is great. I'm not sick. The contractions, I can feel them, but they're manageable. Then she's like, okay, I'm going to turn back on the Pitocin. I'm like, great. And as soon as she turned it back on, I'm like, oh shit. Like I'm only numb up to like my high thighs. <laughs> <laughs> so that backfired. And then all of a sudden within 15 minutes, because she's like, you need to push your button because there's this button on the side of the bed that if you want more Pitocin, you push the button. No, you want more, uh, you want more epidural. All right, uh, yeah, more epidural, you push the button. And I was like, oh, can I do that? And she's like, yes, push the button. So I pushed the button. And then right after I pushed the button, I was like, oh, the baby is coming out. And she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yes. No, 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 no. She wasn't in the room. Oh, no, no, no. She, she I was. Said that uh, to me. Oh, okay. Because all of a sudden I was like, I need to push right now. And w what's crazy is they had checked me right before they gave me the epidural. I was only like dilated to like a six. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is going to take another six hours. So it was funny because all of a sudden, as soon as they kicked that Pitocin back on, I was like, oh, I need to push right now. And then I had pushed my button for the epidural, but like I said, it it takes actually 15 minutes once you push the button to have effect. Well, by then, I'm already pushing. And so the doctor comes in, and he's, like, making jokes. And I'm literally, like, mentally going somewhere else. And he's, like, looking at me, like, not even a smile. And I wanted to be like, um, I can feel everything, and you can fuck off. That's kind of what I was thinking. Because <laughs> I've never experienced, like, that. Like, I felt like I was, like, pretty much having natural childbirth. So anyways... I, yeah, so then it came time to push the baby out. Two pushes, she came out, she was cute. They handed her to me. A lot has changed since, well, a ton since yeah. Time well, like with my other two kids, they literally whisk them off. They, I don't even know what they do. Like, I'm literally just sitting there, and all of a sudden they bring them back. They have a little beanie on, and they're all swaddled up. And I'm like, oh, my baby. It was so different because now they do what's called skin to skin. So they immediately, as soon as they pull the baby out, they pull your um, gown down and they put the baby right on your chest. And to be honest, like, I think I'm kind of in shock because every time, like when I think back to delivering a baby, I get like su super emotional. And I'm like, oh my God, it's such a cool experience. But in the moment when they set your baby on you, at least for me, it just takes me a minute to like wrap my head around everything. And I'm like, oh my God, there's, there's a baby. And then the other thing is the baby is like super purple, which I never seen the baby right out. And I'm like, oh, she's purple. Is she breathing? Is she okay? And they're like, she's fine. So, um, but I mean, it went well and it, like, I don't know. I, I've actually thought out of all three of my deliveries, this is probably the best, even though I was in a lot of pain. I think I managed pain better than I manage being nauseous. Because as you heard from Garrett, it doesn't go over well with me. So our last baby was like almost nine years ago. And at least at this hospital, they had they made a massive policy change like eight years ago. And there was a huge initiative that they put in play about making sure that the babies and the parents were far more connected than what was happening. So what I remember, like I go back to like my, my son who was born like five weeks early. You know, he's 20 now. I go back to Bailey. I go back to Ruby. Like, all I remember is the baby comes out. They take the baby. There's, like, all kinds of panic going on. Mom does not hold the baby. They're, the doctor holds the baby. The nurse is holding the baby. They're quickly wiping the baby completely off. So they're wiping all the white stuff off the baby. They're wiping the baby completely down. And then I'm, like, snipping the, the umbilical cord. I didn't get a snippet with Ruby. They made me sit in the corner. Did you snip it with her? Oh, yeah. 
They did made snip it wrong because I remember them telling No, me, I didn't snip it wrong. Well, I remember them telling No, me, they clamped the belly oh, thing wrong. Oh, okay, because I was like, what happened? No, 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 I didn't snip it wrong. They clamped. I, I was kind of delirious, but I remember them saying, like, you need to redo this. The I don't know what it was. The doctor had the clamp they put on the umbilical cord right on her belly button. Yeah. It was actually clamping under her stomach skin. Oh. So there was one that was clamping her skin and the umbilical Aww. cord. And the nurse caught it and said, Doctor, you need to do another one. So he did a second one. Okay. And then they came back like 10 minutes later and they, after they put it on her chest and they undid the other one oh, that was okay. on her belly. So <clears throat> anyways, um, like, so this, like, th- this is like the, the normal process. Baby's gone. And I remember going, getting to, to bathe the baby for the first time with the nurses in the, like the nursing they unit. And at nighttime you would get to go, you would hand the baby off to the nursing unit. I remember waking up like five times through the night and going and seeing the baby in the nursing thing, having to look through the glass they would let you come in and maybe if you were lucky to hold the baby. Now, there's no nursery. It's over. Like, the game's totally different. Like, they take the baby out. And this is what shocked me. Like, I was not prepared for this. Nobody had taught me that I was needed to be prepared for this. Nobody had mentally set the frame on me. The doctor was like, kiss your baby. Yeah, well, I, this is what I'm going to talk about. Like, Dr. James pulls the baby out, starts wrapping the wrong way with the umbilical cord, realizes it, unwraps the other direction, gets her out of the umbilical cord, then immediately, like, just holds her. She starts crying, and then he says, congratulations, Dad. Do you want to... He said, kiss her. He didn't ask me if I wanted to. He's like, kiss her. And he holds Isla right next... Now, Isla's covered in the baby fluid and the white cream and, like, the matted hair with the... Like, uh, like the whole thing. The bill cord. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm the left leg holder. Like, I'm holding down the left leg. Like, nobody prepared me for the kiss. I didn't know this was coming. <laughs> I'm like, am I... I like, going to pass out? No, there was a moment where I'm sitting there. I'm like, I like, there was like a half a second. I'm like, oh shit, okay, this is happening. I'm supposed to kiss her. So I lean over and I kiss her on the head. Then immediately they take Isla and they place her on Danielle's naked chest, like right between her breasts, like right on her chest. And Danielle's holding the baby, having her go through her own thing. Then the doctor goes to town and they're doing their thing. They're taking care of Danielle. They're stitching her up. They're doing everything. Which she didn't like tear big, nothing. It was like amazing. But I was not. Like, you said that. That was a totally new thing. Like, totally new thing. And to sit and look at my daughter lying on my wife's chest was, like, amazing. And getting to kiss her right away was amazing. Like, it was so much more intimate, so much more spiritual, so much more connected than any of the other three children that I have had. I'll tell you, pushing out a smaller baby does make a difference, ladies. Like, my other two, it was, I couldn't sit for weeks. And now it's been like 10 days and I'm like, yeah, I feel great. And Garrett's like, can we have sex? I was like, <laughs> no. He's like, really? I mean, we could lay naked together. I'm like, where does that lead? You can't. You know exactly where that leads. Where does that lead for me? Nowhere. <laughs> You're going <laughs> to, never mind, I won't say. <laughs> I told her, listen, there's a lot of things we can do that do not involve a wounded vagina. All I thought of was like giant milking boobs, and I was like, no. <laughs> you could put on. Anyways, we'll keep going. At this. I, you know what? That's another thing. Like, hold on. Let me finish one thing about like the birthing process because, so if we if we back up to like what was going on before, like there was a moment. So I'm sitting on the side in the chair, right? My daughter, who's 12, is there, and she's watching this whole thing. It's gonna change her life forever. She's oh, videoing she, the whole thing from yeah. her cell phone. She sat. Lotus position, and they, normally they do not let them stay in there, I guess. Like, only one person, the father, or no, and that's did, it. That, no, no, that's what they told me. They no. said they only let one. The doctor no. and the, ma- the primary nurse and the secondary nurse all looked at each other in nonverbal cues and told me afterwards. They looked at Bailey. She looked like she was okay. Uh-huh. They're like, she's not going to be a problem. Well, you, my mom, and Bailey. Yeah, but they just let her stay in there, though. Yeah. Normally, don't let the young kids in there. So, anyways, Bailey's videoing. She's doing a good job, and she's like, yeah, she's 12, looks like she's 16. She's, like, hanging out in there, but here was, the, like, one of the most amazing things that I didn't get to experience when Danielle was on the major epidurals with the other two babies, which was More the push. Like, Danielle would go to, like, deep pain, and then she would come back to complete presence. When she was on the epidural, she, it was like she was a numbed... <laughs> for like 20 hours like it was horrible to witness like she was so sick so jacked up from the medication like it was horrible so i'd watch her go through these moments of a minute to minute and a half of like pure excruciating pain and then all of a sudden she would like have like this euphoric peace on the other end of the pain 
and I watched it go back and forth, which for some of you may be doing this and you've done this like before, maybe natural childbirth. I don't know. Like it was, it was like maybe that's normal for you, but that was not normal for me. It was very intense. But the most intense piece was I'm sitting there and she's like, I've got the left leg. Like I've only got one, one fucking job. That's it. Like Gary, you got one job. Hold the ankle, hold the knee, don't pass out. The nurse standing to my left says, Bend your knees. I was like, really? She's like, yeah, bend your knees. Your legs are locked out. Bend your knees. You're going to be fine. I was like, are you sure? She's like, yeah. So I'm sitting there in like this three-quarter squat. I'm like, I'm not sure how long I should be sitting in this three-quarter squat while I'm holding the left leg. Now, I'm holding the left leg. I'm looking down. I'm seeing what's going on down there. The doctor's there. Bailey, my daughter's doing the video. My mother-in-law is sitting in the corner doing cheerleading hands. I'm looking over the other nurse. There's another nurse holding a leg. I'm holding a leg. Another nurse is holding her hands. And Danielle is sitting there. And all of a sudden, the moment comes. And he says, I'm massaging the perineum. Which I don't even know what the perineum is. But it's something going on inside of her. Even she's massaging. And then he says, push. And you push. And you give, a, an, you give like the most intense, primal, eyes shut push and it's, it's like yeah! and like the baby head comes out and I look down and Isla's head sitting there and Danielle thinks she's done it's like uh, it's like it's like you know if you were you were like halfway taking a like shit I mean Dr. James then says okay let's go one more and Danielle's like I can't I can't and all of a sudden out of nowhere arguably the most inspiring Five seconds of my marriage to this woman, and all of a sudden she goes to this deep, most intense, primal, like soul level. Like it was insane. It didn't sound like that at all, but it was like it was amazing. And I'm sitting there watching her, and all of a sudden the baby goes, shoots right out. Didn't she shoot out? In the she second sh- one? she shot right out on the oh. second one. And Dr. James grabbed her and he's just like, boom. And then the kissing happened and then on your chest happened and all the rest of this. But like you're sitting in that moment, like you don't even know I'm holding the left leg. I have a crucial role in this. I'm, I donated the sperm. I'm holding the left leg. And I didn't pass out, which means I'm like, I, literally, if we were like grading me on the scale of did you smash it, did you not? I totally smashed my part. Talk to me about what's going on for you, though, when you're pushing. Um... Honestly, like as soon as I could feel her coming out, I it's it's weird. You go to another place. I felt like my eyes were like rolled in the back of my head, and they like were. things went dark, and then all of a sudden there was a baby. So I don't know. It, it, I mean, it was painful as shit. I'm not even gonna lie. Like when I was um, my other two babies, I was so numb I couldn't feel anything. I'm like, am I pushing? I don't know. With this one, I was like, holy shit, my insides just got turned in outside. Like it's, it was. <laughs> It was really aggressive. Like, I'm I'm glad there was only two pushes because I might have just, like, passed out if there was more than that. But she came out, and I definitely feel like she was worth it. So, <laughs> so that's the baby update. And um, she's here, and I've had a pretty smooth recovery. I've been up and about, and things, things seem – I feel pretty good other than, like, I'll – try to like lift things I'm like oh nope no strength yet so just trying to remind myself to take it easy because I have a I love like the newborn phase and like the snuggly phase but I also love staying busy and I love staying active and I just I love to go 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 so I'm trying to like enjoy oh don't make her fuss I'm trying to enjoy like the snuggly baby phase because I know it goes so fast but and just kind of like listen to my body but also like I kind of go insane if I'm if I'm kind of just sitting around all day so I just kind of do some work on my phone snuggle the baby hang out with my other two kids and things are good I don't really experience a ton of postpartum um I get so uncomfortable towards the end of my pregnancies I'm like just excited that I am getting more comfortable oh here I can take your hair nope you keep oh, oh, oh careful careful up, I got her so anyway she is she seems like a pretty good baby I mean she she will I don't know she just sleeps and poops and hangs out so I don't know I'm I think I'm pretty chill with newborns I mean I've had a few traumatic experiences like where I forget how it takes so damn long to get out of the house and the other day this is kind of funny the other day Garrett had hooked these um adapters onto my stroller so I could hook it onto my car or my stroller problem is no the adapters on my car seat to hook it onto my stroller 
But the problem is I went to go put it into the base inside of my car and it wouldn't go in and I couldn't figure it out and I'm like super frustrated. I'm sitting there for like 15 minutes trying to find the, like the little clippies and I'm like, oh my God, why, wh- how does this go in? I'm like, oh my, I'm like, I'm just getting like super frustrated and I'm like sweating. I'm not even like doing anything, but like just trying to figure out this damn car seat. I'm like sweating and I'm like trying to hold a newborn. Then I have my eight year old holder. <laughs> <laughs> then I ended up like taking the car seat and just like throwing it. I'm like, screw it, I'm done. And I'm you did like, not throw it. I did, I threw it. I'm pretty sure that's why the little umbrella thing broke. <laughs> but I was like, oh, and then I was like, okay, I have to go pick up a prescription. I need to figure out this stupid car seat. So then I pick it back up. I push 95 buttons and then it popped out and it worked and it was great. So, but other than that, I, I do love the newborn phase. I just, I think they're just so cute and snuggly and it, I know it's like such a short phase. So I try to just like soak it all in and Ruby looked at me and she's like, are you going to have another baby? I'm like, Oh, maybe. But then I'm like, no, <laughs> like if you would have asked me towards the end of my pregnancy, I'm like, hell no, I'm not having another baby. But now that she's out, I'm like, Oh, maybe one more. So I don't know. What I, do you think? Are you going to have another? I don't know. Like, I, 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 I was kind of saying... I have this weird feeling you're going to. I kept saying, like, oh, my God, like, I'll get a surrogate. I don't care. But I don't know if I could do a surrogate. Like, there's there's quite a bit of bonding that goes on when... Even though it's painful and scary, like, when you are pregnant. And so, I don't know. I don't... I actually feel like I don't have bad pregnancies. This was the only one, like, towards the last few months. But my other ones, despite them not being too bad, too, I remember thinking the same thing. Like, the last few months are rough for me. Like, I'm a petite person. And it's almost like my body's like, wow, you're done. And it's just, it's rough for me. Like, I get super bad anxiety. And, like, I just feel like I can't breathe. But I know that's, like, everyone's like, oh, you're pregnant. That's normal. I'm like, mm, I don't know. I feel like it's rough. So, but once so what I, do you predict? Are we having another baby? I don't know. It's too early to say, but she's pretty damn cute. So that's a, that's a bad, that's a horrible prediction. What do you think? I don't like to commit. Like, let's just, I mean, let's not like close the door. Don't go get snipped on me or anything, but like, I can't commit to closing the door, but I can't commit to having a baby. But I, the thing is with me is like, I don't commit to a lot because if I commit, I'm like 120% in, I'm like, Oh, this will go down. So I, some people will be like, Oh, you can't commit. And I'm like, well, that's because when I commit, you know, I'm a hundred percent going to follow through. So anyway. So here's my prediction. She told me when she was, uh, before, before baby Isla came out, she said, I'm done. I said, okay, you want me to go get snipped? And she hesitated. And she said, uh, and then she told me the surrogate story, which I don't have a problem with doing that. If, it, if we do it, that's great. But here's what I think is going to happen. You ready? Mark my words. No. Yep, mark my words. So we have a 12-year-old and an 8-year-old that are close together. They're bonded. They're super connected. This little one, Isla, is going to be too distant from Ruby and Bailey. By the time, that, by, by the time Isla is about 6... Bailey will be 18 and graduated from high school. She's going to be like zero fucks given. Ba- Ruby will be 15 years old in high school. She will be zero fucks given. Which means Danielle is going to want a secondary friend for Isla. So because of how much she's watched our 12 and 8 year old bond. Which means my prediction is Danielle has another baby at 40. 40? 40. That'd be four years from now. Actually, that's true. I, I guarantee you. Listen, I'm going to put this I, out there. You know this show is going to be right here, and people are going to be like, oh, my God. And I'm like, no, go back and listen to the show. 2019, July, and I will predict that my wife has another baby at 40, so and we have I'm, a second, we have a fourth child together that is like the two-pack couplet, exactly like we had Bailey and Ruby. We have in Isla and a... Fill in the blank. Just guess right now. What would the name be? Go. Isla and Samantha. Samantha and Isla. You don't like Samantha? (laughs) All right. Isla and... I don't have anything. Isla and I don't have anything. Anyways, she never figures out the name until... Actually, she always figures out the name. I never have any opinion about the name. I don't care anything about the name because, like, I know my wife is, like, a a bit of a witch. So, like, she plugs into the universe and the universe tells her what's going on. And I just, I'm like, yep, that's probably it. Let's do this. So I'm telling you right now, my wife's going to have a baby at 40. You know what, my mom? And my daughter, I let, I know, my, my daughter, dude, our friend, you know Sam, and again, and again, had a baby you at 41. Because my, my, everyone keeps asking me like, oh, is this pregnancy harder because you're older? And I'm like, um, I'm 36, so I feel pretty young still, but I don't know. Honestly, my mom had six kids, nine pregnancies, 
and her last child was at 41. She's like, that was a super easy pregnancy for me. And then she had two other pregnancies in her 20s that were her hardest pregnancies. So I don't, she's like, I don't know if it's age. You're for sure committing right she now was, to another. No, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just, seed. You're having a baby I'm just saying like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm not going to close the door. Stay tuned. You know what they say though? In your 40s, you're the most sexual when you're a woman. Oh my God. Four more weeks, babe. Hang in there. Four more, Four more weeks, weeks until it is go time. We've got to make sure that the asset is protected. What is the asset? <laughs> you know what the asset is. I don't know what the, the asset, asset is. The baby maker and the baby maker. Oh, it's fine. All right. Anyways, we are wrapping up the show. My friends, we're going to be uh, actually live in our new studio. Uh, this next episode, we'll be live in our new studio, and you'll get to see baby Isla because we're going to bring her to the episode with us. She'll be, uh, she'll be manageable for the next like six to nine months. After that, she'll be a complete nightmare, throwing crackers everywhere and wanting to chew on and throw and chew on everything. So... But until then, she'll be a quiet little little nugget sitting inside of a baby seat. Hope you guys have a great if week. If you want to see what she looks like, you can go oh, to my hold on. So if you want to see her and her cute little hair, <laughs> you can go to my Instagram. It's D- no, it's not DKW setting. It's just Danielle K. White. But I, I've been joking around because I have, like, a family page. But she's just so cute. I've been saying, like, for the next six months, just, like, plan on baby photos. <laughs> So, anyways, thanks for tuning in. Um, Just wanted to give you guys an update on baby Isla, born July 3rd, 6 pounds, 6 ounces, doing good, doing healthy, and we are excited to be new parents, despite Garrett feeling very sexually frustrated. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Sexual frustration is beyond that. It's now sexual isolation. My friends, that's all we got for you. We're out. Uh, be the man challenge.com. I know that we've been talking about worrybook.com forever, but be the man challenge.com is the new entry point for wake up warrior. If you're listening to the show, you're a man and, uh, you connect it all with what I am saying or, and, or you're a woman who connects with what we say. And you have a man that you'd like to play inside of this game of having it all being a man who shows up, not only in making the money in business, but also inside of babies and life and dating, etc. Well, send them to be the man.com. Thanks so much for being here. We'll be back next week, but we'll be live in our new studio. We're coming at you with video of Baby Isla and ourselves. This is Gary J. White and Danielle K. White, co host of Date Your Wife Podcast, signing off saying love and like, good morning, good afternoon, and oh my God. good night. No, that's actually my Warrior on Fire podcast. We're not going to use that intro. We're out. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>